Today we're talking about binders. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Ed Choi. Today we're gonna to be going over how to choose a proper binder. Now, if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. In this channel, I talk about everything to do with the office, including office products, tips and tricks. And of course, in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how to choose a binder. For the longest time, I thought a binder was a binder. It's got three rings, it opens and closes, and I can put my documents in. But that's not the case. As you can see behind me, we have tons and tons of different options for binders. So today, let's figure it out. So here we go. Step number one is choosing your page size. The size of the document will determine the size of the binder that you use. As you can see, we have different options for our binders. So step number one, what size document are you gonna be using? Is it an eight half by 11? Is it legal landscape? Is it legal portrait? So let's figure that out first. Second step is determining the sheet capacity. So how many sheets are you gonna be putting in the binder? So that's gonna determine the thickness of the binder. As you can see in the binder, we have our thickness. So this is, happens to be a one inch binder. So for the sheet capacities, depending on your ring size and your thickness, that's gonna help determine the sheet capacity of the binder. So the reference over here, this will show you kind of the sheet capacity and the type of rings that are associated with the capacity. So you'll notice that the regular round ring, the traditional round ring that we usually see has the least amount of capacity and the most amount of capacity is your D ring. Now there's a slanted D and a straight D and we can go over that in a little bit. So once you determined the size of the sheet, the sheet capacity, then we're gonna be talking about the application. What do I mean by application? Is this gonna be a light duty or heavy duty application? Meaning, are you gonna be inserting documents, taking them out, inserting, taking them out? Or, or is it just kind of a set it and forget it? Let's put it in the binder, put it on the shelf, and we won't touch it for another year or so. So if that's the application where you just wanna put it in the binder and just, you know, you're not gonna be referring to that often, you'll probably wanna just use your traditional round ring binder. Now round ring binder, you've got two tabs, pretty basic, we all know this, this is probably what we all grew up on. Got two fingers to release the binding mechanism and just close it with the binders like that. Boom, boom, nice and easy. But if you're gonna be referring to documents a lot, let's say you're in the legal industry or you're developing a training manual where things constantly change, you'll probably want to consider using a single touch mechanism. So that single touch mechanism looks like this. So it's just one touch. And look how smooth that works one more time. I just love how smooth that is. So watch this. So what's the benefit of that? Well, of course, the benefit of that is if I'm inserting a lot of documents, I can just do it with one hand. It's way, way more efficient than opening at the mechanism and closing it. So over time, of course, that will save you a lot of time and time equals money. The other consideration is just the style of the binder. We can go with a basic binder. If it's just for your own purpose, this binder, you can slide in eight and a half by 11 inch sheet in here to label it, but there are some binders that have no pockets at all. So that's your least expensive binder, your kind of your economy binder, your go-to binder. But if you want it a little bit fancier, you have binders like this quick fit binder over here. What makes this a little bit unique is that on an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper, you can label your binder, use their program to create a label, and then you can insert it right into their binder. And it's a, just a really, really nice way to mark out your binder. Some binders do not have this type of feature, the quick fit binders. Some binders, you have to actually put the label down the spine of the binder. While that's okay to do, it's just a little bit more time consuming. So you gotta really figure out what type of presentation view binder you need. Other considerations is another pocket on the inside. So whether you need that pocket uh, to store extra documents or sheets that are loose, that's another consideration as well. Finally, another one to consider that a lot of people don't know about is a hinging binder. It's something that we don't really consider, but it is worth considering. Why? Because it'll actually takes up less space on a bookshelf. How does that work? Well, you can see here on a straight, on, this is just a regular binder. To get the clearance of the rings over here, you can see that it actually leaves a bit of a gap here. It's adding extra width to the overall binder. Now with a dual hinge design, the same thing, you can see how there is no gap. All right, so there you can see on the hinge design, it actually saves a little bit of space. And the larger the binder gets, the more room that you save 
on your bookshelf using that hinge design. Now, if you've got a lot of documents like this stacked on a bookshelf, similar to what I have back, then you might want to consider a file binder. Now, what does a file binder look like? Here it is, file binders, very, very handy. Now with a dual hinge, because it actually clears room, it's a little bit shorter than your traditional binder. That allows you to fit in a bookshelf so everything stays smooth with the bookshelf. It's actually a very, very nice feature. It's something that you should consider if you've got a lot of binders and you need to store them on a bookshelf. So there you go, guys, your five steps on how to choose the proper binder for your application. If you have any questions, comments about binders or anything else related to the office, please leave a comment down below. And as always, if you like the show and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks a lot for joining me and have a good one.